This is the first time I'm talking about this in depth with the camera on. <laughs> Hopefully all goes well. I have the power of Tata. We can do this. Hello my friends, it's Nina and today we're going to talk about social anxiety. Finally, I am finally sitting down to just talk about this topic. I think officially for the first time on my channel. I've talked about social anxiety a couple times on my channel, but I've never made a specific video about it. I've mentioned it in a video where I was putting blush on for the first time, and I made a video on how to be less shy, which has a little bit to do with social anxiety, but also doesn't because having social anxiety and being shy are similar, but also different. So today I'm going to be talking about this topic and how it has has been a big part of my life. I've literally wanted to film this for years now, but I never really knew how to... Also, don't mind, my neighbors are out and about for some reason, even though we should be social distancing right now. My neighbors are just everywhere, that's okay. But I'm finally going to talk about me dealing with social anxiety. I feel like most of you guys do know that I've dealt with social anxiety in the past. I still kind of deal with it, but it's definitely not as bad as it was in late elementary school, middle school, the beginning of high school. I will mention that I'm not professionally diagnosed just because I've dealt with most of my social anxiety when I was younger, when I didn't even know what social anxiety was. I just thought I was extremely shy and just nervous and anxious all the time. And I thought it was a normal thing that I didn't really have to get help with. I also became more aware of social anxiety when I was in, it was like late high school, early college that I really started to understand what it was and how I could actually deal with it in a healthy way. But most of the social anxiety that I've dealt with was when I was much younger, when I didn't even really understand what it was. And so it was just a huge struggle. <laughs> but after learning about it and researching and finally figuring out what it was, I did realize that I had almost all of the symptoms and signs of social anxiety. So I want to mention that if you do want to deal with your social anxiety the best way before my words or before anyone who isn't a professional about this is to seek an actual professional is to seek professional help i am in no means a professional on this topic i am just someone who's dealt with social anxiety for most of her life and has done my own research on it and learned how to deal with it on my own. Everyone is different, everyone needs different things. This is just my experience with social anxiety from one young adult to another. I am not a psychologist or counselor or anything like that. I am just someone who has dealt with it enough to want to be able to talk about it with other people who might be dealing with it. I am just going to talk about it now and I honestly don't know where this is going to take me, but anyway, Let's just get into it. So first things first, what is social anxiety? It is basically like a social phobia, a phobia of social situations, of socializing, of being in front of people. Sometimes it's about the fear of presenting or performing. Basically, you experience symptoms of fear and anxiety when you're in a social situation. For me, when I was in a social situation and my social anxiety was much worse, my face would flush red, my hands would shake, I would suddenly start to kind of forget how to breathe. I would run out of breath when I was speaking, which would make my face more red, which also made me more self-conscious and nervous because I was realizing my face was getting super red, which made me feel embarrassed and which made me feel scared and weak. And I would start to get a little bit dizzy or forget my words, stumble over my words, sometimes choke on my words. Sometimes I would just stop speaking because I just can't speak anymore or I can't process my thoughts anymore. So all of these things would start to happen as I was in a social situation and that would just hinder me from being a normal person. It would make conversations very difficult and I would become very self-conscious embarrassed. A lot of the times after a conversation when I would go home, I would just start crying. <laughs> Another thing about social anxiety is that you tend to overthink how the conversation went or how the social situation went. I would think about the same conversation for days. <laughs> even though it's obviously an irrational thing, even though it's something that people don't really think about all the time, people just have conversations and they just move on. For someone with social anxiety, you just, it feels like the worst thing ever. It is basically an irrational fear of social situations because your body kind of perceives the situation as something scary or 
dangerous just like how if you have an irrational fear of wasps or flying insects for example i'm talking about me if you have an irrational fear or something you start to get nervous around it your body kind of just like tenses up or you feel like all the blood's flowing out of your brain you start to get dizzy you start to shake that kind of stuff for me i have an irrational fear of flying insects especially wasps because that's what really triggered this fear i got stung by a wasp and it was the most terrifying painful thing ever i will literally leave a room or run away from my friends if i see one it's very bad but i'll have this fear and my friend will completely be okay around wasps and that's kind of how social anxiety is as well someone will have social anxiety but someone will carry on through a conversation just fine the thing is a person will often recognize that it's an irrational thing but that kind of just makes things feel worse because you start to beat yourself up for it you're like why can't i just hold a conversation regularly why can't i just get through this like a normal person you feel kind of weak and you feel like there's something wrong with you. A lot of the time people avoid getting help because obviously you have to go to see someone about it and you're afraid to even get to that point, which is why it's very difficult and why a lot of cases just go undiagnosed, unseen, because people kind of just continue to deal with it on their own because they're afraid to seek out help. But that is sort of the gist of social anxiety and now I'm just going to talk about my personal experience with it. Some people don't think that I have social anxiety just because I'm on YouTube just because I seem to be good at public speaking or meeting people for the first time. I personally don't understand that. The reality is that I'm talking to a camera. I'm not talking to an actual person. I know that I'm talking to an audience and I know that people are watching me, but at the current moment, I'm talking to my Canon G7X camera and I'm not having a conversation with someone. I'm not socializing. I'm just merely speaking. I'm speaking, but I'm not socializing. I'm not having a conversation with someone. I'm not worrying about the person's facial expressions. I'm not worrying about whether I'm being entertaining enough. And I'm also not thinking about what my next response is going to be just because I'm talking on my own time. When you're in a social situation, you can start to panic about what you're going to say. You also become very wary of the person's facial expressions, which personally makes me nervous because if there's a change in tone or if there's a change in expression of the person, that starts to make me feel nervous especially if i start to think that the person's getting bored or the person's judging which is an irrational thing because maybe that's just how they look maybe they're not trying to be scary but personally for me that's how i will perceive it which is not the greatest thing to do but someone who is socially anxious will be a little more sensitive to these things so that's kind of just like a big difference about me being able to talk to a camera versus me being able to talk to a real life human being with feelings and emotions and unpredictable things. <laughs> One of the reasons why I actually even started a YouTube channel was because it was the place where I can be myself without judgment, without holding back, without being silent or feeling like I can't speak for myself. Social anxiety eats up a lot of your life because you can't really be the person that you want to be. You can't get your feelings across. You can't get what you want to say across, which kind of makes people think that you have nothing to say or that you can't stand up for yourself, that you can't speak up for yourself. People think that you don't have anything to say or that you're not interesting or that you don't have a lot to offer, which is not true because everyone has something to offer. Everyone has something to speak about. Everyone has something that interests them or gets them excited. But a lot of people just feel afraid to express those. YouTube was basically my outlet. It was this place where I could be free. It was where I could just be myself. And so that's why people tend to have this perception that I am a super social person. I actually don't know if people think that, maybe. <laughs> maybe I'm assuming that and people actually think I'm very reserved. I know that I do meetups where I meet you guys for the first time and communicate with a lot of people. I do go to events where I meet people for the first time. So I do understand why people may think that I'm maybe outgoing or maybe not shy around people but it took a lot of growth and a lot of change, a lot of self reevaluation, things like that for me to finally get to where I am now, where I'm able to communicate with people a lot easier. So now I'm going to talk about how this all kind of started. Social anxiety doesn't just really come out of nowhere. There are causes for social anxiety. As much as there is with basically any fear, there is always some kind of cause 
to it. I think that's also one of the ways that I dealt with social anxiety is that I really had to kind of go backwards and understand where this all kind of came from. Like what made me so insecure and so afraid of a social situation. Every time I thought about making this video, I would overshare and I would talk way too in depth about certain moments in my life that triggered my social anxiety and gave me these traumas. It would take me 30 to 40 minutes just to get through a few stories from my childhood <laughs> and I would literally get nowhere and I still didn't get to the actual point of the video. So I'm not going to go into depth about certain moments from my life just because I don't need to go into to death about those. I don't need to remember certain people. I don't need to bring up all these memories that I kind of wanted to put in the back of my brain in a box away from my other thoughts. But basically when I thought about all those moments together, I realized that those traumatic dark times and memories all had a similar theme of just mean people, negative things said to me, people who made me feel weak, small, unintelligent, not worthy of being heard, not worthy of having friends. Basically in my own past there were mean people who made me feel like I couldn't stand up for myself. There were people who said things in front of me knowing that I wouldn't be able to fight back, knowing that I wouldn't be able to just stand up for myself. It makes you feel like people can just step all over you, kind of kick you around. There were just enough of these moments in my childhood where complete strangers would say things to me or make me feel bad. And sometimes even people in my own personal life would make me feel like I didn't belong or that I wasn't being heard. And that all just affected the way that, <laughs> why is my voice getting so weak? Those moments all just kind of piled on top of each other and really made me start to believe that I wasn't worthy of being heard, that I wasn't a strong person. <sighs> Well, it's so hard to talk about. Back then, people would just pick on my insecurities, which obviously just doesn't make a person feel good. And it made me start to believe that I was just my insecurities and that I was just this or that, that I couldn't stand up for myself, that I couldn't make friends. It really just takes a toll on how you think about yourself and you feel like you can't grow out of it. You feel like you can't change. It was very constricting because you felt like that was all that you could be. Pretty clouds, pretty sky. Whew. Growing up before I went to school, before I was five, I was a very happy, loud child, I think. I had my brother who was a year younger and we played all the time. We were very loud and I was a happy child. I was not insecure in any way because I was three, I was four. I didn't think about insecurities at the time. I was pretty loud and chaotic as any child could be. And that's how I realized that it was me becoming a part of society where things started to go kind of downhill and all these insecurities would pop up and I became more afraid of the world around me and myself. But because I experienced these negative things whenever I was socializing with people, whenever I met people for the first time, and because I experienced these negative things with both complete strangers and also people in my life, it really affected my trust in people. Whether it was a stranger, whether it was an actual friend, I had a pretty hard time making friends because I felt like I didn't belong anywhere. That kind of affected the way I would make friendships with people as I grew up. It was harder for me to open up to people and let people in or try to make new friends because I felt like they would go away or that it just wouldn't go well. More and more just social situations became exhausting to me. I just didn't want to participate in them anymore. There were lots of circumstances in elementary school and middle school that made me have to constantly find friends and all that because I just didn't know where I belonged and it just became exhausting to a point where by the time middle school finished I was just spending time in the library by myself. At lunch I would just go to the library and just read because I was just so exhausted from trying to find a place to belong. I even remember a lot of the books that I read <laughs> because I spent more and more time just there by myself because I just didn't want to try anymore. By the time it was my middle school graduation, I was just so exhausted that I went to my graduation. I said hi to a few new friends that I made, but at the end of the graduation, I was just so tired. As soon as the graduation ended, I went outside. I didn't take pictures with anyone and I just went home.
I felt like I would never be able to be confident in myself because I only ever really heard hurtful things that it was just hard for me to kind of manifest positive things about myself It felt like there were just walls everywhere that you were just like facing a wall and you're just surrounded by walls You felt like you couldn't really get over these walls that were kind of preventing you from living your fullest life or reaching your fullest potential so that's why I'm glad middle school kind of ended <laughs> I think a very important thing is that you don't surround yourself with people who don't uplift you Surround yourself with people who make you feel good, who make you feel seen Why am I crying this entire video? Oh my god <sighs> Surround yourself with people who make you feel like a good human being Try to avoid or cut out people who make you feel like you can just be stepped on. You deserve much more than to remain in places that keep you from growing. You are not the negative things that people say about you. You are so much more than that. And that took me a very long time to realize. Me dealing with social anxiety and me being able to let more people into my life and let myself open up to others, it really took a lot of self-growth and self-love. There is this thing called cognitive behavioral therapy, which is a practice where you try to change the way that you think, where you try to adjust the negative ways that you think and try to put in more positivity, which requires a whole lot of patience and it requires a whole lot of strength to do, especially if all you've ever heard were all these negative things that it's just hard to manifest positive things out of nowhere basically it's like how do i suddenly tell myself i'm a good person how do i suddenly tell myself i'm someone who can be confident when all i've ever heard were negative things so that's why i definitely advise that if you can try to seek a professional to help you get through this because i don't know what i can tell you that can make you change the way that you think about yourself but definitely a thing that really helped me overcome my social anxiety and really trust people again and be able to open up to others was to change the way that i thought about myself because for a very long time i thought that no one was listening to me i thought that people just didn't want to listen and that is not true there's always someone who wants to listen i for example am always willing to listen to someone there are are people like me and that was a very hard thing for me to believe when I was younger as well I kind of just needed someone like my 22 year old self telling my 12 year old self that I am heard at some point after middle school I just wanted change in my life I didn't want to be the same defenseless Nina that I used to be I don't know how I came to that epiphany but something in me just wanted that change I think it was also just friends that I made as I got older. I started to be surrounded by people who actually uplifted me and made me feel like I was important. I found friends who genuinely uplifted me and made me the person that I am today, which I am so thankful for. And I'm looking at a Polaroid of them right now. I have a Polaroid of some friends and I'm just very thankful for them. I was definitely very lucky to find people who made me feel good. I started to finally have these positive things in my head. I started to finally believe that I was a good friend to someone, that people laughed at my stories, that people just saw me because as I said, when I was younger, I didn't feel that way. In high school, I also just did more things that helped me look at myself more. I wrote in a diary a lot when I was younger in high school. Now you guys know that I bullet journal and stuff, but that's mostly about tasks and all that. But when I was in high school, I actually wrote my feelings a lot. And so I was able to kind of look at my feelings and analyze them. That really helped a lot because I felt like I had an outlet because sometimes I felt like I couldn't share my feelings with someone, especially because not everyone is able to find a close set of friends that they can confide in luckily i was able to find that and i'm very fortunate for that my friends and i would just have sleepovers and we would talk till like 3 a.m talking about everything but otherwise i would also write my feelings a lot in my journal as well a place where i could organize my feelings and see my problems and see things that made me feel insecure dealing with social anxiety it wasn't me learning to be more social it wasn't me trying to figure out how can i carry on a conversation more things like that those obviously kind of help but it was much more about learning to trust people again and learning to trust in myself as well it was about me literally learning to love and accept myself and not see myself as a bad person i had to change the battery but a huge part of dealing with my social anxiety was that i had to learn that the negative
negative things that people said about me did not define me and it did not make me a bad person. I used to think that because I was called quiet or boring or awkward that that made me an undesirable person that people won't like me because of that and that made me feel very insecure and very stuck and helpless because I was like how the heck do I change that? How can I suddenly become more social? How can I be suddenly more fun? How can I suddenly start to entertain people? And that was not the problem. No matter who you are, you will be boring to someone. You'll be annoying to someone. You'll be so talkative to someone, blah, blah, blah. That's not the problem. The problem was that I had to tell myself that that's okay, that that's not something that should consume my life. The problem shouldn't have ever been me. It should have been the people who were trying to make me feel bad by poking at these insecurities, trying to make me feel bad like less of a person. I had to tell myself that it's not the end of the world if someone thinks this or that. You're not here for someone else. You're not here for someone else's entertainment. I don't have to meet someone's expectations and I don't have to pressure myself to meet those expectations. Obviously, you can want to be a more social person. You can want to be a more exciting person. You can obviously want that, but you shouldn't beat yourself up for it because that will stress you out and that will make you feel like you're not doing enough or that you need to change and that's not going to make you happy with the person that you are. I used to be very hard on myself because I always wanted to change. I always wanted to be more. I never just accepted myself. I just wanted desperately to change and that wasn't a very healthy way to think either. It's okay to want growth and it's okay to want to change but it's not really okay to beat yourself up in the process and to not enjoy or love the person that you are. It's pretty tiring and exhausting and not very healthy to always strive to be someone that you aren't. It's kind of just sometimes easier to try to be easier on the person that you are right now because that's who you are right now and if you're constantly trying to look at the future or trying to wish that you were something else, what happens to the person that you are right now? That person just kind of feels left behind and you're never with yourself. You're just kind of frustrated at the person that you are and you're always wishing for something else. And that's not a very healthy mindset. I didn't become more social. I kind of learned ways to be happier about myself, to be a, a better friend to myself, which in turn made me a more social and confident person because I had more positivity in here that I was able to put out to others. And so I was able to see the positivity in other people as well and put that into myself. And because I had more positivity and self-love in here, that was able to make me less afraid of others and finally participate more in conversations and situations with new people because I didn't see people as scary things. I started to see them as just normal human beings. But in high school, that was kind of the gist of it as well. I just became slowly a little bit more confident in myself as the years went by because I was finally with a group of people who made me feel good about myself. It was healthy. I was still shy around people, but it was less bad. I just, I was just a little stronger in my heart than I was in middle school, that I didn't take such things so seriously. Once I got older, I was on YouTube and I had to build a harder shell because the internet. Moving on to college, I went to community college and that was basically the first time I would be away from my old friends. This was just a whole nother step for me basically. I explained all that in so many videos in the past, so hopefully you guys understand my college life, but I went to community college and there I took a public speaking class. I wanted professional kind of help with dealing with being in front of people and just learning properly how to communicate with others and publicly speak basically. So that's another question that I get is how am I a good public speaker? I don't think I'm the best but I think I'm much better than I used to be about maintaining eye contact with people and using my hands and just speaking better in front of a camera or in front of people but that is because I took a public speaking class and that helped so much. It literally taught me ways and techniques to speak and breathe. Breathing was such an important thing that I learned because a lot of the time with my social anxiety, I choke on my words and I choke on my breath. I'm like, 
<laughs> because I would forget how to breathe, I wasn't able to speak properly, I wasn't able to take the deep breaths for me to say my things that I want to say. I would run out of breath very fast, my face would get red, I would get dizzy because not enough oxygen was going up there, but also just taking deeper breaths helped me put more words across because I was able to say more without choking. There were just a lot of things in my public speaking class that I learned that I couldn't really have learned on my own. It was kind of just nice to be taught these things by someone else. And also the people who are joining a public speaking class, they are most likely there either because it was a requirement or because they actually signed up because they want to be a better public speaker. Ultimately, people are all there just to get through the class and improve or learn something. I personally was able to kind of trust these people a little bit. I was able to see them as just classmates who want to get through this class and learn something. That kind of helped a lot, but I really did have to tell myself, Nina, it's okay. I had to do speeches weekly in front of 30 to 40 people and it was scary at first, but because we learned all these things, it just made me a better public speaker. But most of my college life is just a whole nother thing that I've talked about in past videos, but I really just had to tell myself that there's not much to worry about. People aren't out to get you anymore. People hopefully aren't that mean anymore. And if people are still mean, then that's their own problem. They have things in their life that is making them want to project all this anger out onto other people. But moving on to transferring, I feel like being at a giant public university like UC Berkeley was definitely kind of challenging because I really had to learn to be okay with both being by myself much more and communicating with so much new people all the time. Community college was much more small, but once I went to UC Berkeley, it was, I feel like just more exhausting because I don't know how colleges are now, even though I've been out of college for a year. But when I was in college, I don't think it was very accommodating towards people who are socially anxious. I remember I had some classes where participation was required and it was part of your grade. It made me literally very anxious. There were just some times when you didn't want to talk college, you might feel left behind a lot of the time because they just expect you to get along with others and they don't really expect anything else. They just want you to participate with others and make all these connections and bonds and all that and work with other people. And usually you're going to work with strangers a lot of the time. So I really kind of just had to grow and learn very fast. Sometimes it was just a lot of pressure and my signs and symptoms of social anxiety would appear again. There was this one time I was in a discussion section for a class. So a discussion was just a small class so it was like 20 students and we would talk about what happened in the bigger lecture which would be hundreds of people. There was this one time I was in a discussion section and we sat in a circle all the time so we were constantly facing each other. Very nerve-wracking but that was basically the best way to get everyone to participate unfortunately. So we always sat in a circle and we would just have discussions and there was this one time I really did have something that I wanted to say and obviously I had to participate because it was party grade. So when I wanted to speak, I was just like shaking in my seat, anticipating when the person would stop talking and I would go next. It was very scary. It was like a countdown, like a silent countdown. And then eventually you would need to talk. I found myself wanting to participate because obviously sometimes you just have something you want to say. I was speaking, but then I suddenly felt my face go red just because everyone was looking at me because we were in a circle. Everyone was focused on me. My face was starting to feel hot and my voice was kind of shaking, but I was just trying to get my thoughts across. I was also forgetting how to breathe. And so speaking wasn't very easy <laughs> to the point where I can still remember this story. I said what I wanted to say, but when I finished talking, my hands were shaking. They were shaking so much. I had to hide my hands under my desk. And I was like, what just happened? <laughs> Cause as I got older, you know, I became more comfortable working in groups and obviously I went through lots of changes as I grew up, but my social anxiety was still there. But even though that happened, I just remembered to not be hard on myself, to not feel embarrassed, and to just remember that that happened, but that's okay. That's not something to be ashamed of. I think it's still something that's going to be there for me, but it's definitely something that you can manage. And I think a very important thing is that you just learn to be aware of when your social anxiety is coming. It's really about reassuring that you're going to be okay because anxiety can eat up everything. And it can, again, make you feel like you're just surrounded by walls that you can't move, you can't go anywhere. Dealing with social anxiety, I have to be aware of it 
it and recognize it and not be afraid of it. In middle school, I was afraid of it. I didn't know how to deal with it properly. I would succumb to my emotions. It just made me feel weak and took a huge toll on my self-esteem. I felt like I failed myself and that I just lost control of myself. But hopefully you can tell yourself that social anxiety doesn't make you weak. It's just how your body kind of naturally reacts to a situation that you don't like. Everyone has an irrational fear. Everyone has something that they're afraid of that other people might not be afraid of. And social anxiety is one of those fears. I had to grow a lot. I had to get myself out of negative situations and take out toxic people and thoughts from my life for me to be able to finally take in good things. That's the thing that I forgot to mention is that I also had some help with my self-love. I listened to music that made me feel uplifted and it literally was just another perspective that one was able to love themselves and love themselves simply for being themselves. They didn't have to be a certain someone. They just deserved to love themselves because they existed and because they're just a decent human being. This may be a little bit cheesy but when I was transitioning from my life at community college to a public university like UC Berkeley, I discovered BTS and their lyrics really just helped a lot. It really just put self-love into my brain and made me feel that I can just love myself for being a human being. I didn't have to have a reason, I just could and I hope more people can realize that for themselves too. You don't have to be anyone for anyone. <laughs> you can just exist and be yourself and love yourself for that. I was able to listen to these songs that made me feel positive and I feel like everyone has an artist like that or some kind of thing that they love that makes themselves feel like that and I hope that people can just be happy with themselves too. They don't have to have a reason to, they can just feel good about themselves, not be afraid of themselves, not be afraid of the world, not feel like they have no one listening to them or that they don't have anything or anyone on their side. There's always someone on your side and if there physically isn't one, just know that I am that person for you, that I genuinely just want people to live their life to the fullest. I just wish it wasn't so hard for us to be able to love ourselves. It took me more than a decade to finally accept who I was and to finally trust myself and be confident in myself that I could let people back into my life, that I could put myself out there to other people as well. Don't reject yourself or hate yourself because others did. What people have said about you is not who you are. Only you know who you are. You've lived with yourself the longest and you're going to live with yourself the longest as well. If you're just a decent human being, not hurting yourself, not hurting others, then you deserve to grow, you deserve to just live your life. Sometimes I look back at my past self and I just get frustrated for myself that I let so many things hurt me for a very long time. I hope that you guys can deal with this properly as soon as possible and know that change is possible. I look back and I'm honestly thankful that so much has changed. Even today I meet you guys and some of you may be dealing with social anxiety as well. I feel like I'm also making this video to remind you guys that I also deal with it as well and I just want to be a safe space for you guys. I genuinely just want the best for you and hope that you can take the steps that you can to grow and overcome your social anxiety and other anxieties as well. If you're ready and in the mind state, definitely seek professional help if you can to deal with the things that you're going through because someone is always willing to listen. It's also okay if you're not ready to get professional help but just know that there are ways to slowly get over this and slowly overcome it. I'm still dealing with it but I'm not as hard on myself as I used to be and it's just a learning process but it's definitely very possible to overcome it a little bit. I think that is going to be it for this video. I don't really remember what I talked about, but I hope that this was just kind of eye-opening or that there was something good that came out of this. I may talk more about this in the future just because I am curious to hear what you guys have to say. Thank you guys so much for watching and for hearing me out and for hopefully making it to the end of this video. I love you guys very much and I will see you in my next video. Bring it in and goodbye my friends.